Hello everyone. This is Sadhana Alangar, HL7's Director of Education. I will be hosting this session and Andrea Rubik, the Communications Director of HL7 is joining me as a co-host. The moderator for this session is Diego Kaminker and the speaker is Viet Nguyen. At this time, I'm going to hand, the, hand over the program to Viet. Hi Viet. Thank you, Sanana. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I hope everyone is having a good dev days and learning lots. Uh, I, I was told that I'm uh, the last session of the day between uh, you all and uh, the virtual pub. So we'll give you a good reason to uh, stick around and hopefully learn a little bit about what we're doing in DaVinci, particularly around prior authorization and burden reduction, and uh, have you uh, have a little bit of uh, some resources to uh, kickstart your uh, implementer activities uh, around these implementation guides. So uh, my plan here today is to give you a very brief introduction of, of DaVinci. I think we've done a pretty good job uh, and we've been presenting here at Dev Days, thankfully for the last uh, couple of years on what we're doing. Talk about two of our uh, use cases or three of our use cases around burden reduction and then uh, give you a, a fairly high level tour of the implementation guides as well as uh, the resources for um, the your re developers uh, to start uh, developing against these guides. And then at the end, uh, we're gonna, towards the end, we'll give you some uh, resources that either you can start uh, using the guides and participating in a future Connectathon based on the work on previous Connectathons, or you can try to do something uh, really quickly around uh, Fire Questionnaire and uh, uh, create your own questionnaire. So hopefully it will be uh, worthwhile for, uh, for everyone uh, from uh, limited uh, skills all the way up to um, you know, senior developers. So uh, just very briefly, DaVinci is an HL7 uh, fire accelerator. And we were uh, convened a couple of years ago uh, to address uh, workflows around provider payer uh, interactions uh, and so we convened this fairly large group of uh, stakeholders from the provider community, payer, EHR community, as well as vendors. And, and recently we expanded into a deployment category with uh, Availity and MyHin as um, clearinghouses and HIEs. So uh, our role is to uh, create implementation guides and reference implementations based on a set of use cases that were identified and prioritized by our members. And then we work within the HL7 community and process to uh, gather data requirements, uh, do fire gap analysis, and ultimately create implementation guides uh, that are, uh, can be picked up by the community and uh, implemented. And some of these guides are actually referenced in the CMS and ONC final rules. This is a list of all of our guides that we're uh, actively working on or in progress to work on. Um, and we're gonna focus on these uh, three over here around burden reduction uh, and prior authorization. Um, this is a, a, just a quick summary of where we are in the guides. When we originally uh, started DaVinci, we thought we would do two to three a year. And last year we did about 12. And so uh, here are um, uh, the list of guides as well as where they are in their maturity. Uh, most are STU1. Uh, undergoing or completing ballot reconciliation and will be published in the end of this month as well as uh, the end of by the end of Q3 uh, of this year. So we've been uh, really busy. Uh, so uh, let's jump into this. Uh, this set of uh, slides uh, were sent to the organizers and will be made available uh, on Whova as well as a, a, some code samples so that you can uh, try them out. But what we're gonna do here is talk about these burden reduction uh, implementation guides. And I'm gonna give you kind of the clinical as well as the uh, payer perspective on these. And then we'll do a quick tour of the guide itself. So uh, the first set of guide, uh, the first guide is called Coverage Requirements Discovery. And I'll apologize if I use a lot of acronyms, but we refer to this as CRD, Coverage Requirements Discovery. And what this guide is really focused on is um, answering the question uh, when a provider goes to order something for the patient, whether it's a durable medical equipment, oxygen, a specialty medication, um, a, a consultation, a referral, or a procedure, we often ask, is this something that I need a prior authorization for? Uh, 
uh, and does the payer cover this service? And typically, we hand the order to the patient, unfortunately, and the patient finds that out for us. But what we want to do here in this implementation guide is when we order that study, it uses CDS hooks to reach out to a payer uh, a clinical decision support server, a CDS server, and returns uh, information to the provider inside their workflow. And they return it as a card. So there's probably a CDS hook session here during dev days if you want to learn more about it. But that card will tell the provider, no, no need for prior authorization, please proceed, which is great. Um, or yes, prior authorization uh, is needed, or before even prior authorization needed, you have to document some, uh, um, some clinical information. Uh, and then thirdly, if prior authorization is needed. And the CDS hooks card gives you the option of providing a link to uh, either a web page for more information or a Smart on Fire app. And that's where the, the workflow is then handed off to our next guide called Documentation Templates and Coverage Rules. And we shorten it for DTR, Documentation Templates and Rules for short. And what that guide uh, defines is a Smart on Fire app that uh, in its essence is an application, could be a payer or provider application or a third party vendor application that uses the FIRE questionnaire to define what questions or what information the payer needs to gather and the provider needs to provide in order to um, fulfill the documentation requirements as well as a potentially prior authorization. That qu FIRE questionnaire is coupled with uh, some scripting from the clinical quality language or CD CQL um, that does the queries uh, into the FIRE repository of the EHR. And using the, the structured data in FHIR uh, combines that data, maybe the patient's demographics data or observation data, with the specific requirements in the questionnaire and then renders that uh, to the provider. And the provider then, uh, the burden is reduced because the provider doesn't have to gather structured data that's already there. They may be asked to uh, add some additional narrative data uh, and then when they submit it or uh, click done, a copy of that information that was stored or uh, gathered uh, is stored in the EHR and then forwarded to the payer via the prior authorization support guide. So now we work, hand off the workflow to this other guide because each of these can actually work on its own. And that's why they're separate. And within the prior authorization support, that bundle of fire data, questionnaire, questionnaire response is uh, transformed into an X12278 message because that's a HIPAA mandated transaction and sent to the payer who unpacks that information, can put it into their system to do automated um, um, adjudication around their utilization management uh, tools and then send the response back to the provider. And so that, that closes the loop in the ideal uh, situation uh, around prior authorization. So again, uh, with coverage requirements discovery, uh, an order triggers a hook, the order review hook, invokes the, uh, the CDS service. The CDS service does some prefetch of things like the patient demographics, conditions, um, also their, their coverage information, like their, what plan they are, uh, they're on with that payer. And that CDS service uses that information to search its own repository uh, and then returns that uh, uh, questionnaire and the CQL, oh, sorry, returns the, the card that uh, says that you either need uh, uh, additional documentation or uh, a prior authorization, and then allows the user to launch the Smart on Fire app. And so the benefit here it really takes the, uh, the work out of finding out whether you need an authorization or not, because as a patient, you never wanna be, uh, find out when you get the bill that the service that your physician ordered wasn't covered by your provider, uh, your payer. That would be not great. Uh, as a, uh, uh, as a uh, provider, I'd like to make sure that the, the service I'm ordering is covered by the payer, and if not, um, uh, try to get it covered, and then um, make sure that I, I provide all that information so there's no rejection of that claim in the future. So providing this uh, to the provider is really helpful, and one of the things we've learned is that uh, there are some um, alternate workflows that involve delegation, so you might need some additional labs or things to uh, do the prior authorization and that we're working on those uh, now uh, for the next update to this guide. 
So with the prior authorization support, again, you, you finish that um, di uh, dialogue, the user interface and collecting the data. When you click submit, it creates a questionnaire response and uh, stores all the fire data uh, back into the EHR or provider system and then sends it forward to the, uh, the, the payer. And so this really allows the payer to have structured data that they can use uh, in their utilization management prior authorization systems to do as rapid an adjudication as possible. And the problem we have today is that providers are being asked to fax, yes, fax, information to uh, payers or use payer portals uh, to send information. And um, it's not very um, user friendly. <laughs> So that, these are the, uh, the three guides that we're gonna talk about uh, now. And so in the next set of slides, what I've, what I've done is that I've laid out a, a number of resources uh, for you all uh, that you'll see in the, the deck so that you can familiarize yourself with uh, these artifacts and be able to um, uh, engage if you wanna build some uh, technology around this. So the first one here is this uh, implementation guide. And so let me switch to uh, my browser. And, oops, so, so um, just so you know, can you, everyone see my browser, I'm hoping? Um, yes, uh, this is the uh, DaVinci site on HL7's Confluence site. And if you uh, go to the HL7 site at uh, confluence.hl7.org, you'll find DaVinci here on the right-hand side. If you clicked on that, you will get to the DaVinci uh, page. And on that page is a, a number of resources for both our DaVinci members, but more importantly for the broader community that it, that's implementing our guides. We have this implementation guide dashboard that lists all those guides and use cases that I mentioned before, along with links directly to the guide, the project page, the sponsoring work group, as well as the reference implementations. So uh, first of all, for the uh, uh, coverage requirements discovery, is this uh, implementation guide. And for those not familiar with Fire IGs, uh, there's a certain feel, look and feel that uh, we're kind of all coming to agreement on, but typically you'll have some overview of the, the background of, of the specification, uh, some guidance around uh, the content, the use cases, uh, dependencies. And if you look, if you're more comfortable reading it kind of end to end, you can go by the table of contents. And what we'll do is we'll be listing most specifically the workflows and use cases. And so you can read that here, example use cases that are defined by the community. Typically we'll, we'll have a diagram around the technical workflow. And then uh, most importantly around FHIR, uh, we will list the any uh, dependencies such as the US core, which is very important to all DaVinci uh, um, implementation guides and pretty much anything that's in the US, but we'll list all the profiles that we use as well as any um, fire operations. And if you need to download them, you can also uh, download them as well. So, um, so this is uh, the CRD. And then let me go back here to the, so the next is the, the project page. So uh, in our project page, you can find uh, the work that's been done uh, during the the use case calls and the HL7 process and the, the various topics that are that have been discussed. So we have information about our calls, who's leading them, uh, as well as uh, supporting material. Very helpful. And then we have the, let's go back. We have a GitHub repository. And so for each of the DaVinci uh, use cases, we have both in-kind and contractor uh, support to not only write the implementation guide and put it through the HL7 balloting process, but we wanna make what's in the guide real. And so we have um, uh, contractors and in-kind support to develop reference implementations. And the term reference implementations, it turns out is, is fairly flexible. Uh, in, in our definition, it's uh, exemplifying what is in the implementation guide with examples so that you can see how for given examples, the fire resources, profiles, and operations are used in both the technical layer and in the code and, and the APIs, but as well as simple user interfaces that you can look at uh, to see you know, uh, how it might look to a user. So here is the, uh, the CRD uh, a GitHub site that provides lots of information on, on how to create 
uh, your own um, CDS uh, reference implementation server or use a server that uh, has already been uh, stood up. Uh, it, we partnered with uh, Logica, also known as the Healthcare um, Service, Health Services Platform Consortium, and they uh, provide developer sandboxes of uh, fire resources and fire servers as well as uh, hosting services. And so using this, uh, you can learn more about how um, CRD is implementation guide is actually implemented using OAuth and, and SMART and, and, and such. So you'll have that. And then we test it out with the community and we do that through uh, Connectathons. This happens to be a link to the most recent Connectathon, Connectathon 24, uh, which was held back in May during um, when, uh, uh, time when we were traveling for the working group meeting. And so we combined the three implementation guides uh, I talked about, I'm talking about today into one track because they're all um, uh, interrelated. And so here we list out um, the Zulip track and, and how you can communicate with others working on that uh, track. We have implementation uh, information about how to do the implementation. Uh, and then really cool is the, the folks from MITRE who are uh, supported by CMS actually created a video where it walks through how to set up your own uh, uh, server uh, as well as uh, OAuth. We have endpoints and then we have scenarios. And for those who have not participated in Connectathon, I encourage you to because this is where we test out Fire to see to make sure it's real uh, as well as to make sure it works the way we think it's supposed to work in the implementation guide. And so we use these scenarios and we build uh, test scripts using Aegis uh, Touchstone platform and we test each of these scenarios between either a client server that we build in the reference implementation as well as uh, implementations that uh, participants bring uh, from their own organizations. So it's a really uh, great opportunity to test out your software and if you're a developer, not only with DaVinci members, but with the EHR vendors. And as you can see on the left, there was a, quite a, a large number of tracks uh, in the um, May Connectathon. We anticipate there'll probably be a similar list uh, in the September Connectathon. So uh, I mentioned the video and you'll have a link here in the, uh, the handout. We also have uh, just an update again, we have a STU ballot that was completed and uh, com currently undergoing ballot reconciliation and we anticipate it'll be published uh, very soon. So this is a, a briefly again, a, a technical view of what I described around uh, the uh, CDS hooks, the response with a card, how OAuth works with it and the relationship between the the application, the uh, document templates and payer rules application, as well as the EHR uh, server. So moving on to uh, uh, DTR, uh, we have a similar set of, of uh, resources for you. Uh, here's the, uh, the implementation guide for DTR. Uh, we list the use cases. It is uh, dependent on um, uh, uh, US core. Uh, we have a set of use cases here, uh, particularly um, a simple, straightforward one around um, oxygen as an example of something that might need uh, uh, prior authorization. So I showed you this uh, before, the CDS service on the payer side uh, launched uh, by the CDS hook on the provider EHR side and the uh, DTR app link provided in the CDS, CRD, uh, CDS hooks card response and that app gathering information. Uh, and so here's the example for, uh, uh, for oxygen. And here's another way to uh, look at it from a kind of higher level view. And of course, uh, you have the resources here as well as, uh, let's see here, you have your links to SMART, links to SMART, CDS hooks, uh, CQL, uh, we won't cover CQL, it's fairly advanced uh, uh, part of FHIR, but uh, I know Bryn Rhodes and, and others will be, I think, talking about it here at Dev Days and other uh, venues as well. And here are some of the profiles and expectations. So the implementation guide, uh, what I stress to the community in HL7 and DaVinci as we're developing these guides is the recognition that the vast majority of individuals who are reading these guides are never in the conversation when they're developed. So we do our best to put in everything we think you'll need 
to implement here are these guides. So if you're uh, an early adopter, an implementer, and you don't see something or you learn something, uh, please give us that feedback. Uh, we have Zulip streams, and, uh, and uh, if you're an HL7 member, you can put um, JIRA tickets in so that we can address uh, uh, problems or uh, incorrect technical errata in these guides. And then we try our best to collect those, and then with each validating of each version of the guide, we improve it. So again, uh, we have a, a GitHub repository for um, DTR. So you can download uh, their example app, as well as create your own uh, um, uh, service. And we use a, a, a test EHR to kind of uh, be a user interface uh, for, the, uh, for the DTR. So that, that's really great information for you there. And it uses the same setup video. So you can, uh, you can uh, look at that video. And we anticipate that we're gonna uh, be finishing the ballot and publishing it uh, at the end of this quarter. And on top of that, we recognize that the prior authorization process isn't really cookie cutter at all. Uh, there's, there may be differences in different types of things being ordered, such as durable medical equipment, uh, specialty drugs, uh, specialty labs, or diagnostic imaging. And so one of the tasks that we've taken on uh, for the next uh, rest of the year, along with updating the guide uh, from implementer feedback, is to create examples. So that if you uh, needed to create a, a questionnaire and a guide around specialty drugs, you'll at least have one example. And uh, uh, that will we, we believe will help the implementer community. We won't be able to do every example, but at least we can do exemplars. So this is the, again, that, that uh, diagram we showed earlier that was from the, uh, the GitHub site around how the questionnaire response, uh, in, uh, the questionnaire feeds the DTR uh, Spot on Fire app and uh, renders the questionnaire to the user. And the user then fills out what is not already captured as structured data and pre-populated in that form. Uh, and then when they, uh, they're done, they submit it and it's uh, stored, it can be stored as a document reference, which is supported by most of the vendors, uh, but if not, uh, it could also then be forwarded uh, and put into a claim resource uh, and forward it to the, uh, the payer. And that's what we do here in, in prior authorization. Uh, we take that um, um, questionnaire response bundle that includes the, um, the uh, information collected in the, the Smart on Fire application uh, we add on a claim resource, and that claim resource contains uh, the mapping and the information necessary to create a, an X12-278 message. And we don't do this part in our guide. We provide uh, uh, some example mappings that, uh, that, are, that were sponsored by uh, X12 and uh, allowed license for limited use by um, the HL7 community implementing uh, just for testing but ultimately they'll be developing uh, additional mappings uh, and maintaining those as well. Um, so let's see here. So there are a number of profiles uh, related to prior authorization that'll be uh, important for folks who want to implement this because uh, historically um, the financial domain uh, in healthcare has been uh, the focus of X12, and now that we appreciate the value of FIRE and, and wanted to do combine the clinical domain with the uh, financial domain, we're having to uh, create profiles on our financial management or uh, financial FIRE resources. And so this is what you'll see here because uh, the, the payers need this information uh, in order to process, uh, uh, process the prior authorization. So the STU-1 ballot uh, is completed again and will be published later this year, hopefully by the, uh, the end of Q3, assuming we uh, resolve all the, the, uh, the ballot uh, comments. So that's the, the quick tour of those three guides. And uh, what I thought we would do next is, is really give you two options. For folks who are uh, in the payer provider community who are very interested in uh, implementing this a series of implementation guides, but haven't really got engaged yet, what I would suggest is that you uh, look at the information in this deck around the Connectathon. 
and then with that uh, start to do some planning uh, to participate in a future Connectathon. We'll have one, I think we, we anticipate we'll have one in um, September uh, during the working group meeting that uh, we're organizing now. And uh, that way you will uh, already understand the implementation guide. You'll hopefully have some technology already de developed and tested against the guide, but then you'll be able to bring it to the Connectathon and test with other uh, HL7 and vendor uh, community members and DaVinci members. And I think for those who, uh, who are really serious about um, working in, in prior authorization, I think this would be the, the, uh, the best approach and the long-term uh, approach. For those who are, are more interested in, in, in understanding this uh, DTR and, and information gathering approach, uh, in this deck, uh, with the help of Michael Watkins, who is a, a PhD candidate at the University of Utah here in Salt Lake, he's been uh, working with me as uh, my technical support uh, I'm a physician informaticist, I'm not a developer, so uh, I don't write great code. And so he's helped me write some code that we want to introduce now to help you understand how a DTR application would work. And so uh, along with this deck, we're going to provide you the sample code that you can um, work on uh, for yourself and start developing um, variations of it. This way you'll kind of understand how the DTR uh, questionnaire and questionnaire response work. So I'm going to jump into that. Um, it doesn't look like we have any questions yet. It would have been a good time to check for questions. So if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, enter them into the, uh, the chat. So for this next part of the, the demonstration, uh, we are um, going to walk through a fire questionnaire. We're going to show you a simple uh, DTR app and it's how it renders the questionnaire resource. It's really going to be screenshots, but you'll have access to the code itself. We'll Yet, show you there is a question from oh. one of, uh, about uh, what are the driving sources for payers to implement these guides? It's really uh, comes from the desire to have uh, well, better one, better relationships with the, the, the providers. Um, uh, prior authorization has long been identified as something that causes a lot of burden to providers. They spend hours each week, depending on their, their specialty, filling out forms to make sure that their patients are getting the diagnostic and, and therapeutic uh, interventions that they feel are important. And that, that puts a burden on them. And this burden is, is really significant, not only on the providers, but on their, their medical staff, their back office staff. And um, as a result, um, it, it's, it's very manual. Uh, faxing forms, using portals, gathering information, printing them. And uh, we believe that the implementation of these series of guides will, um, will help lower that burden. And prior authorization, whether you like it or you don't like it, has a role in trying to make sure that we're appropriately using the uh, resources of the, uh, you know, the, the patients that have to contribute their premiums and the companies that, that help pay for uh, health insurance to make sure that they're being uh, uh, used appropriately. There's a, um, so there's a question uh, about, uh, is there a possibility to implement prior auth without using the 278? The transaction is fairly limited. Um, that is true. Uh, there is the possibility if you don't use a clearinghouse and you have a direct relationship between a payer and a provider so that you, the, the translation isn't, uh, wouldn't necessarily have to be done. But payers today are using the information that 278, so we're trying to augment that, that information. So if there's a follow-up, please feel free to, to enter that. Um, so uh, continuing on on this option two approach, uh, we... Um, What's out of scope in this series of, of guides that you'll, you can download is that we're not going to talk about the CDS hooks, the query and response. If you uh, look at the Connectathon track, you can uh, find out more about that. We don't create a CDS service or CQL. Those are fairly advanced uh, um, capabilities around FHIR. And so I, I suggest folks uh, digging in and learning more about those from the, those experts. And we don't do a prior authorization support or uh, claim submit operation. You can set up a server to do that, but that's really ultimately going to be something that payers do because um, there's a uh, transformation of data to 278 if necessary. And then behind the scenes is this 
um, um, utilization management set of rules that you that work on the data, and we really don't we don't really do that as part of DaVinci. We're in the interoperability space to how to get the data from the provider to the payer. So I have about seven minutes left, it looks like. So um, the app itself is a simple JavaScript app. Uh, you'll need uh, Python uh, on your uh, desktop to, to run it, either two or three, as, as well as a text editor. Um, the data for the patient will be pulled from a Logica uh, sandbox. And we created a, a Logica sandbox that uses R4 for this purpose. And so you'll have that link. And when you download the file, it'll be in a zip file. So you'll uh, unzip the file. Uh, you'll navigate to uh, uh, the terminal, uh, uh, navigate to the folder using uh, the terminal, uh, start a simple Python uh, uh, server, and then uh, using your browser, you can see the application um, uh, locally. And on the right is a, uh, the simple rendering of the questionnaire uh, that Michael helped me put together. What you'll see is there's a, um, a CSS, a style sheet for the uh, um, uh, questionnaire. We'll have the JavaScript that contains the code that will um, uh, render the questionnaire as well as uh, create the questionnaire response. Uh, in the HTML, and as you look to uh, look at the uh, questionnaire, um, uh, you'll see where, uh, links to the, the, the JavaScript files. And uh, here's the function to render the questionnaire. And um, we will be fetching resources uh, 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 from the Fire server instead of doing CQL, which is uh, certainly more complicated. And we uh, uh, parallel what was done in the uh, GitHub site around the home oxygen um, therapy order template questionnaire. And if you want to see what that questionnaire looked like, uh, you can click on that link when you uh, run the, uh, the, uh, the JavaScript app. And the questionnaire represents something really important, which is uh, there, it's possible to have structured data in FHIR, like the demographics or specific FHIR observations or conditions. But then we put in some kind of nonsensical kind of questions in there to show that as a uh, uh, payer, you might be requiring information that's not available in the EHR uh, as structured data, either not yet or not yet in time because it hasn't been created yet by the, uh, by the provider and the patient. So we show how you can uh, enter uh, information using drop-down uh, menus that pre-populate uh, uh, a drop-down menu. And then once you, store, uh, you uh, sub, uh, complete the questionnaire, uh, it'll be stored, and then we uh, create the uh, uh, questionnaire response um, as well. And here is, sorry. And here's where we uh, create the form. And each, uh, each item, each question, it, it has a, uh, a link ID that links the questionnaire with the answers in the questionnaire response. And that's how we, uh, we uh, keep track of uh, the relationship between uh, the question and the response. So we don't, of course, we didn't, we're not going to use um, CQL to do that, but you can use CQL to do this. And so here's a questionnaire response. Okay. And uh, here, if you were to complete the, the series of implementation guides, you would submit this questionnaire response and all the uh, uh, related fire resources and narrative or other data uh, from the questionnaire, uh, combine that with a claim and, and submit it to a, a prior authorization endpoint. So, um, Again, we're gonna make this deck available. I put some additional resources on here for folks who may not have uh, as familiar with FHIR or don't know about things like the uh, HL7 Confluence site, the Logica Developer Sandbox. Uh, we encourage everyone to join the implementers forum uh, for um, chat.fire.org, uh, participate in uh, virtual connectathons. And sorry, this is an old slide. Uh, uh, the May connectathon will be a September connectathon, it'll be uh, Connectathon 25. We also have these additional uh, DaVinci resources uh, on the Confluence page as well as GitHub. And I showed you this implementation guide dashboard. And these are our use cases that you can find on the same Confluence site. 
and um, we want we want to encourage uh, the community uh, interested or have stakeholders or customers in the payer and provider community to come join us in working on use cases, uh, 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 developing implementation guides, testing them, and uh, uh, implementing them. So I want to thank the DaVinci members, uh, thank uh, CMS for their in-kind support and, and contracting with MITRE Corporation that developed our uh, IGs and reference implementations. Uh, and then I also want to thank uh, Michael for uh, helping me write the sample code that you all will be uh, looking at um, and, and testing out. Um, so the, the question is, um, if you're going to develop this, you can either um, ask questions on the Q&A for the track uh, in Whova, or uh, you can ping me on, on Zulip if you have any uh, specific questions, or if you have questions around the implementation guides, we have um, Zulip streams uh, around DaVinci uh, use cases and implementation guides. So I invite you to uh, read those uh, comments and contribute to that conversation. Thank you very much, and I'll, I'll send it back to you, Sadhana. Thank you, Viet. Uh, I suppose, uh, Diego, we don't have time for any more questions. Uh, are there a couple of questions you want to take, Viet? I, uh, yeah, I'm, ha I'm happy to stay just a little bit longer. I have a call at the top of the hour, but I'm happy to. Uh... Uh, Diego, any questions? Let me unmute you. Okay, there, there is one, one, one question that we didn't address. Is prior authorization for post-acute care in the scope of this implementation guide? Uh, both yes and no. Uh, there is some work on a post-acute care implementation guide. And so there will be some relationship between uh, the two. Uh, I'm not working on that post-acute care guide, but I think there are active conversations uh, um, in HL7 and, and use case work along with that. It's not a specific Da Vinci guide. I think it's being sponsored by some other groups within HL7, but they are, they are related. Is no that other it? questions. Okay. No, no more questions unanswered. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Diego. Excellent job in mo moderating the question and answer session. Uh, excellent presentation, Viet. Thank you so much, very informative. And thanks everyone for participating. And uh, I suppose the next session is going to be the pubs. So probably all of you are anxious to join the pubs. So please go and enjoy. We'll meet again tomorrow in some other session. Bye everyone. Bye, Bye. Viet. Thanks a lot. Okay. Bye Diego. Thank you once again.